Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Arun and in this video I talk about SAP S4 HANA. If you are following SAP for any length of time, you would have definitely come across the word S4 HANA. S4 HANA is SAP's latest ERP product which is packed with all the advanced technologies to help organizations perform a digital transformation. I'm really excited to talk to you about S4 HANA in this video today. But before we get into the details, I would greatly appreciate if you can give the video a like. It will help the video to reach more people like you who are interested in learning about s Thank you and now let's get started with a quick introduction about s hana s hana was launched in 2015 and it stands for Sweet for HANA. It is not to be confused for Sweet on HANA. An ECC system that runs on a HANA database is called Sweet on HANA. Whereas Sweet for HANA is a next generation ERP system that is completely redesigned from the ground up. It has got a simplified data model, lean functionalities, improved user experience based on Fiori, and also consists of advanced technologies like artificial intelligence and machine learning. It runs only on SAP's in memory database called SAP HANA, and it is available in three different types of versions such as on premise, private cloud, and public cloud editions. Now let's take a look at the S4HANA's architecture. This is what S4HANA's high-level architecture looks like. On the right hand side, you see the devices that can be used to access an S4HANA system. Since S4HANA has Fiori as the user interface, it can be accessed using different types of devices like mobile, tablet, laptop or desktop. Once the connection is initiated, it comes to the SAP Web Dispatcher. Web Dispatcher is the software switch that lies between the internet and your SAP system. When an end user sends an HTTPS request, it first hits the web dispatcher, which then decides whether to accept or reject the request. When it accepts a connection, it balances the load to ensure an even distribution across the multiple application servers. SAP Web Dispatcher therefore contributes to security and also balances the load in your SAP system. Then depending on the type of request, the connection either directly goes to the application server or to the SAP Fiori Launchpad. SAP Fiori Launchpad looks something like this. The square boxes are called Fiori tiles. Basically, these are like the mobile apps you see in your iPhone or Android phones. Each of these tiles has a different purpose. There are thousands of standard Fiori apps available from the Fiori apps reference library. And you can also create your own custom Fiori app as well. Users can still access the S4HANA system using the traditional SAP GUI, but it is mostly reserved for administration and compatibility reasons only. Moreover, utilizing Fiori apps is a must in order to take full advantage of S4HANA functionalities such as embedded analytics and robotic process automations. Then we got SAP Gateway. As the name implies, SAP Gateway lets you connect devices, environments and platforms to SAP systems. It uses an open data protocol, which is also known as a word data, for communication, which means you can use any programming language or model to connect to SAP and non-SAP applications using the gateway. s hana uses gateway and word data services to translate business data from the database and present it to end users using Fiori apps. Then SAP Application Engine. s hanas application engine contains a simplified data model. It does not require aggregates to process the queries, so the number of tables required to perform day-to-day -day business operations is drastically reduced. As a result, the memory footprint of an s hana system is drastically reduced as well. s hana can perform both OLAP and OLTP transactions. And I will talk about the OLAP and OLTP in detail in the HANA database section. Next one is CDS Views. CDS stands for Core Data Services. It is also known as the code pushdown model. This means some of the resource intensive calculations are pushed down to the database layer and those calculations are executed in the database itself and the results are transferred back to the presentation layer, which takes the load out of the application server, thus providing the best possible performance. Finally, the SAP HANA database. As I mentioned previously, s hana only runs on the HANA database. It is SAP's in-memory, column-oriented, relational database management system that combines both OLTP and OLAP into single system. OLTP stands for Online Transaction Processing 
and OLAP it stands for online analytical processing OLAP is basically about capturing storing and processing data from transactions whereas OLAP is all about analytics which means processing complex queries to analyze aggregated historical data from the OLTP systems storing data in main memory rather than on disk provides faster data access hence offering better performance than a non in memory database in the next section we are going to talk about the evolution of svahana first one is sap ecc ecc is the predecessor of svahana its latest announcement pack version is called announcement pack 8 and it can run on multiple databases such as Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, DB2, MaxDB and Sybase. Then the suite on HANA was introduced in 2011. SAP introduced its in-memory database called HANA and SAP ECC was made to run on HANA database as well. From Enhancement Pack 7, ECC got the capability to run on HANA database. Even though technically SAP ECC was able to run on the HANA database. Its functionalities were not completely optimized to take advantage of the in-memory capabilities of the HANA database. SAP then introduced Simple Finance in 2015 and the first version was called 1503 or 1503. It is basically an add-on that sits on top of the ECC system. The ECC system must at least have an enhancement pack version of 7 as a requirement for the add-on to be installed. The add-on contained the core fin finance functionalities of ECC and the code was optimized to take full advantage of the HANA's in-memory capabilities. But the other modules in ECC remained the same and they were not optimized. Then in November 2015, SAP released the fully optimized suite for HANA application called s hana The initial release was called 1511 which contained only some core functionalities, but more functionalities and advanced technologies were added during future releases. By the time of making this video, the current version was released 2020. All the modules available in S4HANA are optimized to take full advantage of in-memory capabilities of HANA database and fewer user experience. Now let's take a look at what are different types of modules available in S4HANA. S4HANA consists of modules such as finance, asset management, manufacturing, research and development engineering, sales and distribution, services, sourcing and procurement, and supply chain management. Even though it contains these modules, in order to take full advantage of all these modules, the s hana system must be complemented with certain cloud applications. For example, as you can see in the slide, in the HR space, s hana only contains core HR and time recording functionalities. If you want to use other functionalities in the HR space, then you will require an application something like success factors. S4HANA offers more than 25 industry solutions. Industry solutions are add-ons that provide a tailored system with industry-specific business processes for an organization. It includes categories such as energy and natural resources, service industries, consumer industries, discrete industries, financial services and public services. Please note, all the industry solutions are not available in the S4HANA Public Cloud Edition yet. Now let's talk about S4HANA releases. Every year, a new release of S4HANA is released with new functionalities and bug fixes. The releases follow a naming convention of four numbers, where the first two numbers represent the year and the last two numbers represent the month when a particular release was released. For example, S4HANA 1610 was released in October 2016 and S4HANA 1709 was released in September 2017, so on and so forth. From 2020, a new naming method was introduced where the information about the month is not added in the name of the release. For example, the latest S4HANA release is called S4HANA 2020 and the one that will be released in 2021 will be just called S4HANA 2021 regardless of which month it was released. Each release is supported by SAP for 5 years. For example, the release 1709 will be under support until 2022. Key differences between s hana and ECC So how is s hana different from SAP ECC? Well, it is a huge topic and might require a book of its own, 
but let's discuss some of the key differences in this section. As we discussed before, SAP ECC can run on multiple databases such as Oracle, SQL Server, DB2, HANA, MaxDB. S4 HANA can run only on SAP's HANA database. S4 HANA has been rewritten in a way to take full advantage of HANA's in-memory capability. Hence, S4 HANA is faster than its predecessors when it comes to performing certain operations. S4 HANA comes in different versions such as S4 HANA Any Premise, which was previously known as On-Premise, S4 HANA Essential Edition, previously known as S4 HANA Public Cloud Edition, and S4 HANA Extended Edition, which was previously known as Single Tenant Edition. SAP ECC doesn't have a pure public cloud version, but it can be hosted on one of the hyperscalers such as Amazon's AWS, uh, Microsoft's Azure, um, or Google Cl Cloud Platform on a HANA database. Some of the functionalities that were available in SAP ECC were removed in S4 HANA since there is a cloud product available as an alternative for those functionalities. For example, payroll is not available in S4 HANA as customers can choose to run payroll using SuccessFactors Employee Central. As a result, redundant functionalities and database tables has been removed in S4 HANA which makes it as a lean software. While S4 HANA can be technically used with traditional SAP GUI, in order for the customers to take full advantage of S4 HANA's capabilities, they have to access it using SAP Fiori. For example, functionalities such as robotic process automation and embedded analytics or SAP's co-pilot cannot be used using SAP GUI. There are Fiori apps available for ECC system as well, but they are limited in number and functionality. SAP claims that customers can experience a 50% reduction in data footprint by taking advantage of HANA's data compression technique. It also claims that reports run 100 times faster in S4 HANA when compared to an ECC system. S4 HANA provides improved insights, better forecasting and better user experience with the help of Fiori. S4 HANA offers a lot of new innovations such as embedded analytics, robotic process automation, SAP Copilot to name a few. Uh, but there are no such innovations available in SAP ECC. Now we have come to the end of this video. I just wanted to let you know that I also write a blog called Let's Chat SAP. Here you will be able to find uh, topics related to multiple SAP products if you are interested. I provided the link in the video description. Please check it out. Thank you once again for watching my video. Please like and subscribe to my channel and I will see you soon in another video. Thank you. Bye.